What's up everybody? Today is a hardtail party in the snow and I am reviewing the RSD Sergeant in fat mode in the snow. Surprisingly enough, we are in Arizona and I came to the Arizona Nordic Center to be able to ride the fat bike in the snow. I moved to Arizona so I wouldn't have to ride my bike in the snow in the winters, but this is actually going to be a fun day. The Sergeant is set up in fat bike mode. We are running 3.8 Maxxis Minion FBF tires. Technically, these are prototypes, but they're almost identical to a Minion FBF. And uh, we're going to be seeing how it does in snow bike mode. There's quite a bit of clearance in here. Even with the chain stay slammed, we got a quarter inch at least in between the seat stay bridge and plenty of room over here. I'm sure you could fit 4.0s, no problem. Plenty of clearance down here. You can also extend and retract the wheelbase if you want a longer wheelbase, but I'm short on a size small, so I want the shortest wheelbase possible. And we're running the RSD rigid aluminum fork up front with plenty of clearance. I'm not a snow biker. I'm not going to be able to give you a great review compared to other snow bikes. I've been fat biking in the snow probably five or six times. Conditions today, it's dry here in Flagstaff. I've also got my trail dog Fender with me. He's got his snow booties on. These are dog sled boots to keep ice balls from forming under his hands. He loves running in the snow. The thing about snow biking is the conditions change daily and what might be great in one condition could be awful in another. Right now we're on a packed snowshoeing trail where bikes are allowed and this is great the 3.8s have plenty of flotation I'm not digging down I'm getting a little bit of that bobbing sensation you get when your fat bike has running a little too low of pressure. Let's add a little bit of pressure to these tires. All right, we got a little downhill. Let's have some fun. Snow biking. is scary at speed because you can just go down with no notice. It's a different experience than all mountain mountain biking. It's a lot more like cross country or gravel grinding. Not many bumps, not many sharp corners. You just kind of spin and get your exercise. Every now and then you get a little downhill. This bike handles surprisingly more like a regular mountain bike than a snow bike to me, than a big fat bike. All right, I fixed the brakes, no more squeaking. I like the way they've groomed this because there's actually like bumps and it's not just totally flat. There's some up, there's some down. All right, now we are off trail and I have sunk. I don't know that a five inch tire would do much better. This is dry, dry snow that's not packing. You couldn't make a snowball or a snowman out of this. There's no doubt if you're only doing fat biking and you want to bike just for it, I'd get something that can take the big tires. These FBF tires, so far, they corner like a dirt tire in dirt on the snow, which I like. This is less groomed, but it's still packed. And I can feel the flotation. I would be sinking with 3.0s. This is the closest geometry I've found for a fat bike that I like. I'm weird, I'd love to try even slacker with an even shorter chain stay. It may be awful, but I'd love to try it. This still is the closest I've found to what I like on the snow. Wow, this is doing good. Just motoring up this stuff. There's a decent incline here. You probably can't see it, but there is. And just like all the other reviews I've done on this bike, it brings that feeling of just 
pure enjoyment getting out and exploring and being able to add snow exploring to that. It doesn't take away from that feeling of just putting down miles, seeing new terrain, getting out in nature and exploring. This is a true adventure bike. Okay, over here the snow's a little softer because the sun's been on it. We're still doing well. I'm not falling through or slipping. I've had zero wheel slips, surprisingly. I am running them tubeless with orange seal endurance sealant. Oh, this is beautiful. I have zero complaints about how this rides on the snow. I like the 27.5 fat tires. There's a lot less sidewall over the 26 ones. So I don't feel like I'm, there's way less squirm. I don't feel like it's folding over on stuff. Uh-oh, we got off. Stuck. So it definitely wants to stay on hard pack. And I was in the wrong gear. So maybe if there was a couple inches of fresh powder, I'd be wishing for 5.0 tires. Ooh, this looks fun. This looks really fun. Here we go. <laughs> I still use my dropper and put it down. This bike responds surprisingly well leaning it on the snow. This definitely feels a lot more playful, dare I say, easy to throw around than most fat bikes. It feels more like a mountain bike that can go on the snow than a road bike that can go on the snow. A lot of fat bikes to me feel like they have road bike handling and geometry and they're just meant to kind of spin. This one makes me want to pop wheelies and look for little jumps and stuff. Snow bunny hop. <laughs> this has fun little interesting things on it. I got to put a plug for this Alpine Threadworks hip pack. It's one of the most expensive on the market, but it's also one of my favorite. This thing is amazing. It's got my puffy jacket in it, all my tools, a liter of water, pump, a spare tube, my keys. I love it. So this little guy has been awesome with the 3.8s on it. Super fun in this terrain. Fender, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, this trail is much softer. I need to keep my speed up or I'll start sinking. Any softer than this, I'd want a wider tire. But I'm still doing okay. Man, I keep forgetting I'm in Arizona right now. It's starting to get cold. I don't know this area. These maps aren't on trail forks. I just have a PDF of the map, so I'm not really sure how far I am. So I'm gonna turn back and head back. Definitely softer up here, but I still have good traction. I'm able to maneuver this bike around really well. It reacts well too when you start to slide and lose the back end. Because it's a little more like a trail bike, I'm able to recover it better. See if I can ride a wheelie. Oh yeah, huh. that takes some getting used to. Little manuals. This thing steers really well. A lot of snow bikes want to plow when you turn. And I honestly think that's due to the steeper head angle. And since this is a little more relaxed, super relaxed for a fat bike, quite possibly the most relaxed slack head angle I've ever seen on a fat bike. It encourages you to lean more instead of turn the bars and plow, which does nothing anyway. I prefer fun, aggressive geometry like this bike over 5.0 capability. Now it totally depends on how you use your fat bike and where you ride it. This is the most exciting, fun, and playful 
fat biking experience I've ever had. This thing is an adventure machine. Do I dare try to manual it? That's hard with that long chain stay. My short little legs. Oh, I'm having fun. I could never manual a snow bike before. <laughs> He's cruising. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I can only imagine what this would feel like with a super short rear end. I would get in all sorts of trouble. And this had the middle child's super short chain stay. I mean, granted, that's super hard to do with chain rings and all that interfering with the tire. But man, if you could do that, this bike would just be a hooligan in the snow. And so far I haven't found anyone that makes a hooligan bike for the snow. They're all, <coughs> they're all for putting down distance and stuff, which this is hooligan enough to make me wonder where the limit is. And this has been more fun than any other fat bike I've ridden, way more fun. I'm going to rate this as if it were a fat bike, not a trail bike with fat tires. Cornering, 10 out of 10 for snow. This is awesome. Climbing, 10 out of 10. I like the shorter chain stay. Now, if you're in super, super fluffy, soft powder, you're going to want a five inch tire, which this does not fit. You can go a little bit wider than I've got on here right now. And still clear it in the frame, but not a ton. Playfulness for a fat bike. This is the most playful fat bike I've ridden. Fun factor, 10 out of 10. This is awesome. So where does it let down? Really, it doesn't let me down anywhere. It, unless it's soft and like any four inch bike, it's gonna be too soft and you're going to need a 5 inch. RSD, you have made such a cool bike that's so versatile in so many situations. I like this way more than I thought I would in the snow. It has become my favorite snow bike. I've been snow biking a handful of times and that was my favorite. Could have been the conditions, could have been the trail, but I really think it was the bike and the geometry. This bike rides like a trail bike that fits fat tires instead of a fat bike that fits trail tires. Most fat bikes will fit 29 inch tires, 27.5 plus, 26 plus and fat and all that, but they still ride like boring dead bikes to me. They still ride like they're meant to do 50 miles across a frozen lake, not so much find snow banks and slash the corners and bunny hop and see if you can get up crazy stuff now most snow biking isn't meant like that it's mostly groomed flat stuff and i get that but the sergeant rides totally different than any fat bike i've ridden it could be the short rear end it definitely has something to do with the slack front end if anything this has shown me that we have not even begun to scratch the surface of how playful snow bikes can be and fat bikes in general it's a little crazy, but I see a ton of potential for a super slack, super short rear end fat bike. I think we could have a blast on dirt, sand, snow, all over the place, trials. Um, and this is the closest thing I've found to that. This really surprised me how much fun this was on the snow. I didn't expect the 3.8s to be wide enough to provide a whole lot more flotation than 3.0s, but they definitely did. The 27.5 rim meant these were way less bouncy. I didn't get in that rhythm and they didn't fold in corners like the 26 plus tires have for me in the past. Overall, I had a blast. I hope this helps you see the snow side of things as the Sergeant as a fat bike. Coming up next, let's see how it does on the dirt with the fat tires. As always, thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. You were such a good boy. Yes, you were. So good. You're my buddy. Let's take these off. 
Oh, we wore through that one. These things are like three bucks. I'll put a link to them in the description below. They are the best. They're dog sled booties. They work for snow, uh, slick rock, any place you want to protect their little feet. Snow especially, come here, I gotta get that up. They have elastic Velcro in them right here. So the Velcro is actually elastic so it doesn't hold onto their feet really hard. But when we don't use them, he gets snowballs that build up in between these hairs of his feet and they'll get as big as golf balls. And he's just like got golf balls stuck to the bottom of each foot and it really hurts and we have to use our teeth and break them off. So those have been a game changer in the snow if you're looking for taking your doggy out in the snow and you don't know how to do it. And these are just nylon all the way around. They don't have goofy tread on them. You'll find Vibram sold dog shoes, which are really just a joke. They're for the owners to feel like they've got a rugged dog. Dogs don't need tread. They've got feet that need to feel the ground and the tread mutes it for them. So all you need is that. You can even make your own if you don't want to uh, go ahead and buy those. Anyway, quick little tip. If you've got a furry friend who likes to mountain bike with you,